Hi, my name is Stephanie Lin, and I am currently the Vice President for the State of Washington for College Works Painting. And today, I'm here to talk to you guys about um, just a few topics regarding rejection and how to overcome the fear of failure. Whether people like to admit it or not, failure and rejection is one of the most common things that people actually come across on a day-to-day -day basis. That can be not being accepted on the sports team that you tried out for. Um, that can be relating to an audition that you had or applying for colleges and universities uh, that you weren't accepted to. Now the important thing for you to be able to realize is why it is that you initially feel that way, um, but most importantly, what steps can you take to be able to actually overcome those fears? It was just yesterday I was taking a look and I read an article on Facebook, of course. It was talking about how there were seven massively funded startups that were all shutting down in 2017. Um, peak valuation from $110 million, upwards of $3.2 billion, and those businesses were just shutting down. So I think the important part to realize is that even though it might feel like you are the only person it's happening to, that's just a perception and it's something that people encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. When I take a look at the most successful people and the habits that it is that they have, how they carry themselves, whether they were politicians, um, successful entrepreneurs, or maybe they are your favorite athlete. If you look at the way that it is that they walk, they talk, usually they just exude so much confidence that you believe in their plans, their visions, their ability to be able to execute on whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. Now I promise it's not something that is going to naturally just happen overnight, your ability to be able to get over these things. However, the most important thing that you understand is how to acknowledge how it is that you're feeling and most importantly, that you take the steps necessary to be able to overcome these fears. On a day-to-day -day basis, I work with very talented college students. And the concept of you know, the fear of rejection uh, comes up constantly because they face it every single day while talking to clients. Um, so I have three techniques that I'd love to be able to share with you to be able to help you personally get over the fear yourself. The first would be understanding your self-worth. Second would be observation of others. And then third would be to attack it first. So understanding your self-worth typically requires quite a bit of reflection. Um, I find that you have to focus on three different parts of your life, your past, your present, and then also your future. So when thinking about your past, it's really important to be able to actually um, reflect on the activities and where it is that you spent the most amount of your time. Um, so school's gonna be one of those, but also extracurriculars, whether they were um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, AP classes that it is that you took, um, more extracurriculars like sports, activities that you've been involved with in the past, and start thinking of you know what it is that you really took away from those experiences, as well as the characteristic traits that you believe you really developed and how those would actually affect your future positions that it is that you might be applying for. Then start thinking about the present. Um, currently, what is it that you're doing to be able to actually set yourself up so that you can become more of a confident person? Now, reflecting when I was in college, I, I felt like I stood out, but not quite enough as opposed to you know other valedictorians, uh, some of my peers that went to Harvard University and Princeton. Um, so I knew that when I was going to college, I understood that that was my time where I needed to start doing something that was going to really create more of that wow factor for my career. And I never would have thought that I would have been able to run a $100,000 business um, when I was just a sophomore going to school. So after reflecting upon past and then present, the next best thing that you can do is think about your future. You're the only person that can really affect what kind of outcome that it is that you have in the future. So really it, what it boils down to is a lot of the decisions that you make now and not letting little obstacles come in the way of you being able to accomplish your bigger goal. My second piece of advice would be just pure observation and jotting down notes. You can do this by observing videos, um, people on TV, movies, or even just on a day-to-day -day basis people watching. Take a look at the way that they walk the way that they hold themselves. And it can even be affected by the way that they actually dress and their diet that it is that they have. A couple of easy tips in being able to implement these things um, based off of your observation, I'd find that eye contact tends to be something that is extremely important when exuding a certain amount of confidence, as well as your posture. Simply the way that you walk, the way that you sit down, the way that you talk, making sure that you're facing up instead of looking down when you're having a conversation with someone. 
Um, those are probably the easiest tips that you can start implementing. And it, again, this is not something that's gonna happen overnight, but the more that you work on it, um, the more that you're gonna instill more of a habit and the more confident that you're gonna come across. And worst case scenario, the strategy around faking it till you make it works out pretty well. When observing other people, I think it's also very important for you to be able to come up with a list of things that it is that you want to be able to work on and do things that actually make you feel good. Instill it habits, whether that's working out, whether that's a routine that it is that you have every day, um, but do things that are going to make you feel very confident about yourself. My third tip would be to attack it first, head on. Procrastination isn't gonna get you to where you wanna go. Worst case scenario, you get told no, and better luck next time. An example of being able to attack it head on would be if you had a client that you were waiting to hear back, whether or not they were gonna be going with you or not, and working with you. If you don't ask the client directly and you prolong it for a day or a couple weeks, um, you can see that the, the fear of rejection is going to keep building up versus just attacking it head on and asking the client directly. When I was first starting off my professional life, my first week in the position as a branch manager, I had nine sales calls that I was going in to meet with clients. And I was so anxious and nervous that I ended up actually not booking any of them. Um, so they, that didn't go too well. But What's important is that you take the steps necessary after those initial rejections um, that you actually go off and implement a plan. So my plan, um, what I did was I asked for additional help and coaching. I studied my notes um, so that I would become more knowledgeable on the information. And then it's just a matter of executing it, um, attacking it first and just going out there and doing it. So today we talked about the fear of rejection and failure and ways to overcome it. Um, I gave you three different strategies. First would be understanding your self-worth. Second, observation. And third, attacking it head on first. Now the past is unfortunately already done and there's not much you can do to change what's happened. Um, the future isn't really quite here yet either. Um, so that leaves us with the present. What are you doing today to really help build the person that you want to become in the future. Thanks for listening today and the best of luck to you and your future opportunities.